Halloween nights. You're trick-or-treating. You approach the next house on your route and ring the doorbell. A woman answers, and she presents you with a bowl. You expect to see fun-sized candy bars inside. Instead, when you look in the bowl, it's filled with teeny tiny boxes of raisins. Your heart sinks. Is there anything more disappointing than raisins on Halloween? Raisins seem to be universally loathed among all Halloween treats. So why on earth do people hand them out? This is a history of raisins and Halloween. First, it's important to realize that raisins were not always as despised on Halloween as they are now. Let's go back over 100 years to Halloween in the first decades of the 1900s in the United States. Trick-or-treating was not yet a tradition. Instead, Halloween was a night of either mischief or mysticism. If you went the mischievous route, you might play tricks or pranks on your neighbors, some of which might be more harmful than others. If you went the mysticism route, you might gather with other young people at a party for a night of games and fortune telling. Raisins were among the foods that would have been served at such a Halloween party, but raisins also had a role to play in predicting the future. Take for example the raisin race. A raisin was placed in the center of a long string. Two partygoers would take opposing ends of the string and place it in their mouths. They would then chew as fast as possible. The first to reach the raisin was dubbed the winner and was predicted to be the first one wed. Another example was the witch's cake, which was typically a spice cake. The cake was chock full of raisins, nuts, and hidden treasures like a ring, thimble, and money. The finder of the ring would have a husband in their future. The finder of the thimble would have a future of unwedded bliss. And the finder of the money would have a future of wealth. And then there was the witch's fire. A bowl of raisins was doused with a half cup of alcohol and a tablespoon of salt before being set alight. Party guests might dance around this witch's fire or quote, plunge their hands in the flames and get a raisin. As trick-or-treating became increasingly popular in mid-century America, raisins didn't exactly disappear from Halloween festivities, but they did find themselves in competition with all kinds of other sweet treats like candy, cookies, caramel apples, and popcorn. At the same time, the raisin industry was facing a problem. Demand for raisins had been declining for decades. In the 1920s, raisin consumption had reached an all-time high of 2.9 pounds per person. This increase was attributed to Sun Made Raisins, who had launched an aggressive advertising campaign in 1919, popularizing raisin bread and pies and dining cars, hotels and restaurants, and small five cents boxes of raisins for a, quote, ounce and a half of pep. When Sun Maid reduced its spending on advertising in the late 1920s, raisin consumption fell to about 1.7 pounds to 1.9 pounds per person. Now the big takeaway for the raisin industry was that when raisins were advertised, people bought them. When they weren't advertised, they didn't. So in 1949, the raisin industry decided to form a trade group called the California Raisins Advisory Board, whose function, among other things, was to increase demand for raisins through advertising. And by the early 1960s, the board had set its sights on Halloween. To encourage homeowners to hand out little packs of raisins to trick-or-treaters, the California Raisin Advisory Board spent $131,000 on advertisements that dubbed raisins just right for little goblin sacks, and advised that raisins were good for Halloween revelers. It'll do the goblins good to get raisins, their energizing fruit that pleases parents. Better still, goblins love goblin the tiny taste surprisers. Other raisin producers like Sunmade leaned into the marketing, producing their own Halloween ads which read, small ghosts, cowboys, vamps, and robots, in fact, all trick-or-treaters share a weakness for the moist, chewy goodness of sun-made raisins. These naturally sweet, wholesome raisins are full of energy, iron, and other minerals. So they're good for the youngsters, too. Now, it's not clear from sources if goblins actually did love or even like getting raisins for Halloween. Informal surveys of children in local area newspapers from the 1960s and 1970s indicated that candy bars were the leading favorite. I did not come across any children who reported raisins as their favorite treat to receive on Halloween. 
though there were at least one or two children who liked getting apples or fruit the best. The rhetoric around adults liking the idea of giving raisins as an alternative to sugary sweet candy holds much more weight. Described as nature's candy, raisins were promoted as a healthy, good-for-you treat that parents could feel good about handing out on Halloween. As one California Raisin Advisory Board ad noted in 1984, giving raisins on Halloween says you care about someone else's child as much as you do your own, and that says something nice about you. We don't give out candy, I buy little boxes of raisins, one parent reported. Another homeowner planned to hand out sugarless gum, apples, and packages of raisins, telling a reporter, Kids eat enough candy without my contribution. While consumers like these may have driven sales of mini boxes of raisins up around Halloween, presenting raisins as candy's healthy, natural relative may have bred resentment among trick-or-treaters on a night when children are usually given permission to be unhealthy. Even outside of Halloween, raisins were getting a bad rep. Consumers saw raisins as dull, wimpy, and unsophisticated. The California Raisin Advisory Board needed to find a way to make raisins exciting and cool. And so they turned to their advertising agency for help. Research by their advertising agency, Foot, Cone, and Belding, revealed that consumers did not feel a personal connection to raisins. As the lead for the raisins account at the agency noted, we found that people understood what raisins were good for, but that people didn't have a positive emotional image of them. Raisins need to be given a personality that consumers could relate to and like. Working with Claymation Studio Will Vinton Productions, Foot Cone ad writer Seth Warner, and Dexter Fedor turned raisins into animated musical stars, complete with faces, sneakers, and white gloves. The dancing raisins sang the 1960s Motown hit, I Heard It Through the Grapevine. As a voiceover stated, California Raisins from California Vineyards. The commercials were a huge success. Not only did raisin consumption increase 20% between 1986 and 1989, the dancing and singing California Raisins became pop culture icons, spawning movies, toys, and even Halloween costumes. That's right, people actually dressed as raisins for Halloween. And not just a few people here and there. The California Raisins were one of the most popular Halloween costumes throughout the late 1980s. A costume manufacturer told Dan Fricker of the Morning Call newspaper, We're selling hundreds of thousands of those raisins and they're going to be a $20 retail item. We just can't make those fast enough. Every kid in this parade is a raisin. A father at a Halloween parade complained as he stood with his two children, who were also dressed as raisins. Halloween costumes and other products that licensed the California Raisins image garnered $500 million in one year. For comparison, actual raisins garnered $600 million in sales during the same time period. Raisins' moment in the sun lasted through the early 1990s, but by then, dressing as a California Raisin for Halloween had become more cliché than cool. And ultimately, the singing California Raisins and the goodwill they garnered among consumers faded from public consciousness. As of the writing of this video, the California Raisins website makes no mention of Halloween on its homepage, though it does offer raisin options for Halloween-themed recipes. Sunmade Raisins, however, hasn't given up on Halloween. It's actually leaned into the fact that no one seems to like getting raisins on the spookiest night of the year. The brand created a haunted raisin house with the theme of, there's nothing scarier than getting raisins on Halloween. As Sunmade CEO Harry Overly stated, We know there's a lot of occasions for eating better for you snacks like whole fruit raisins. We just recognize that Halloween certainly isn't the preferred time. This year we're acknowledging that there's perhaps nothing scarier than getting raisins on Halloween, except being the house that hands them out. It seems unlikely that kids will ever appreciate getting raisins on Halloween. But who knows? Maybe raisin costumes will have a comeback in the future. After all, is there anything scarier than raisins on Halloween? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this look back at the relationship between Halloween and raisins. I definitely had a California Raisins figurine when I was a kid but I had no idea why or where it came from. So it was really interesting for me to learn about the grapevine ads of the 1980s. 
If you like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel below. It really helps me out. Thank you again, and I hope you have a happy Halloween. I'll see you next time. Thank you.